First, I want to tell you a little story. Of course, I have a little story. Um, so a physicist and a mathematician and a mystic were asked the, to name the greatest invention of all time. And the physicist chose fire, which we will be talking about today, which gave humanity the power over matter. The mathematician chose the alphabet, which gave humanity power over symbols. And the mystic chose the thermos bottle. And the mathematician and physicist said, what? The thermos bottle, so what? And the mystic said, think about it. That little bottle, how does it know whether to be cool or to be hot? Today, we're going to talk about an ele element that is not only on the earth plane, but it is in the spiritual realm. It's a powerful source of energy that enlightens, illuminates, inspires, or like Gary was telling us, can burn and destroy. It's something that needs to be fed this element, whether it's on the spiritual realm or on the physical plane, needs to be nurtured and tended to, or it will distinguish if ever starved. It's a primal force in our bodies, this element. Um, we call it the metabolism, but it is a fire within. It's in our hearts as love, of course. It's in our minds as drive, intention, and desire. The Hindu Vedic tradition has a deity of fire, and they call it Ag Agni, and it's a symbol of communication and immortality. This element represents and forges our passions, our zeal for things, our creativity, our motivation, our spontaneity. In Greek mythology, you may remember the Titan Prometheus, who in the Greek mythological tales brought this element into human lives. Yeah, that, of course, is fire. So I want to talk a little bit about fire and how it relates to us, not as something that we make in a camp, something that we create um, to cook our foods necessarily, but the fire that is within us as well. So there are four needed components to create a fire. And there's just like there's four needed components to create the fire within us, and you'll see how they match. Um, it needs fuel that will burn, and in the mind, that's the idea. So in the mind, that's the fuel, your fuel to start this fire in your life, which eventually manifests or demonstrates, is the idea. It needs heat to make the fuel burn. Now that happens in the mind and the heart where the passion for the idea starts to develop. So first we have this idea and then we have to have passion for it. Oh, that's kind of a cool idea or that's not such a great idea. So either way, that idea kind of floats through. But when we start going, wow, that's a cool idea. I want that in my life. Then we start developing this passion. Uh, fire also needs a chain, oh, I'm sorry, it also needs air. It needs oxygen. Now, in our mind, in our heart, in our gut, that's the imagination, that's the intuition, that's the love that feeds this idea that we've decided to have passion for. Now it also needs, the fourth thing, a chain reaction. Now, in, in a, a fire, that is the feedback of heat to the fuel to produce the gases that make the flame. It's kind of technical, blah, 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 but there's a chain reaction going on there. Same in our lives. When we have the intentional conscious use of the law, we take this idea that we have passion for, that we have now created intention and ideas around that ideas and creativity and imagination and intuition of the questions and the answers and the actions to take. And then the law, because it has no choice, that's what it's there for, makes it happen, manifests it into our lives. Now they also talk about the stages of fire. First stage is the ignition. 
the fuel, the oxygen, the heat, they join together and there's a chemical reaction, right? But in the mind, the idea, like I said before, ignites our passion for it. It, not, it ignites our imagination from the passion of the idea. Where am I gonna take this idea? What can I do? Where can I go? Who can I talk to about it? Where are my allies? What action should I take? Growth is another stage of fire. The initial flame usually ignites more flame or more heat, which creates flame. In our mind, in our heart, that's that passion and that's that ima imagination. It starts taking this idea, and like I just said before, okay, I'll do this, and I'll get this person, this person will love this idea, and, and this will happen, and that will happen. And all these ideas start uh, filling up this big idea that we've had, that we've gained a passion for, that our imagination and our intention and our consciousness works on. Now, fully developed, fire has spread over much, if not all, the available fuel temperatures might reach their peak and result in heat damage and oxygen is consumed rapidly. So now the fire is dimming because all these things start happening. You know, the fuel gets less, so the fire gets less. The heat gets less, so the fire gets less. You know, that happens in our lives too. We start losing faith in our idea. We start losing faith in our ability to keep the consciousness of this idea going, to keep that passion going, to keep that fire going. And eventually one of the stages of, of fire is to decay, is to just burn out. It consumes the available fuel, um, the oxygen is gone, whatever it is, a chemical is put on it to stop the chemical reaction. Whatever it is stops that fire, stops that flame. The very handsome fireman come, that, that's another way to, <laughs> to decay or burn out the fire. And again, in our lives, we start seeing the consciousness of lack show up and um, others' opinions start taking effect and things get on, in our way and we stop believing in ourselves. And then the idea just kind of decays, maybe burns out, or maybe it's taken quote unquote too long and we just lose faith. We are like fire, we burn, we fuel, we ignite, and sometimes we decay. Now I want to quote from the song. The song, by the way, is called The Climb. It was written, written by Jessica Alexander and John Mabe. This is not the version the coasters uh, sang. In the uh, 60s, that was a Lever Stump a song, actually. Anyway, in the climb, it says, I can almost see it, that dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying, you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make feels lost with no direction. My faith is shaking. That's what happens in the decay, when things may start to decay. When we start losing our faith, our our Basically, we start losing, losing our consciousness in this, in this passion. We start losing the passion and then the consciousness kind of goes to waste and we make up all these great excuses of why um, we're going to stop, it's not working, we're going to complain about it, we're going to vent, we're going to tell our therapist, whatever. There's three ways of how fires spread. Conduction is one way. Conduction is when heat energy passes through or within a mirror, uh, material from direct con, uh, contact. So when um, you know fire hits paper or fire hits something that's quote unquote flammable, there's direct contact and it is a uh, conduction happens. So too in our life. Conduction happens when we take this idea that we have passion for and we start sharing it. We start finding the allies in our life and around us that can step into that. When I started this center, I had to find allies. I had to find, um, uh, I had to create a conduction to attract people, fabulous people, 
to support this vision, this mission, this purpose. Convection is another way, sort of like an oven, if you have a convection oven. Fluid or gas flows from hot areas to cooler ones, so it's a convection. It, it happens because the uh, hot area heats the cooler areas. In mind, heart, gut, and life, this divine matrix that I talk about, it harmonizes with the idea, the passion, the imagination, the inspiration, and, and all the allies that, that share it. Okay. <laughs> I thought, did I drop something? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so that's a convection. Because people don't know your idea. You gotta share your idea. Like when you see a movie that you really like. You know, you go talk to, oh, I just saw this movie, and it was great, and it's starring so-and-so, and it's a lovely story, la, 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 la. Like I told you about when, we, when I was talking about um, uh, uh, racing in a car in the rain. How that movie excited me, so I was able to uh, speak about it excitedly. And that creates a convection that creates and brings allies into either going to see that movie or into supporting this organization, et cetera, et cetera. Radiation is another way that fire spreads. Heat travels through uh, electromagnetic waves in all the directions, blah, blah, blah. That's how um, it does with, with fire, fire. But in our lives, in our divine matrix, that's when the uh, idea is shared and it radiates, it goes out into the world. You put it on social media, and people like here, we put it on social media, and there's at least 20-something people there watching us. And I say us, not me, us, because this energy, it's not, it's not so much about me talking, or, or even Barbara beautifully singing, or, or any of that. It's about this energy that goes through that phone, in through the, the, the um, the apparatus called Facebook Live and lands in front of these people's faces. It's not about how clever I am or even how inspiring I am. It is the energy that is going through that, that the, the radiation of the power of the consciousness of this community and what's going on that brings those 20 some odd people every week, sometimes more. Here's more from the song. There's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to want to make it move. Always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes I'm going to have to lose. Ain't about how fast I get there. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. Now, some of that I don't find necessarily true. Don't, uh, it's, it doesn't have to be an uphill battle, unless you want it to be. Uh, you don't have to lose something to gain something in that new idea, unless you want to. It doesn't have to be an uphill battle. It doesn't even have to be a climb. There is always a little climb. And a climb, a climb doesn't always mean um, something that uh, is in your way or is a struggle. It's just pieces have to be put together. And sometimes these pieces put together like that. It doesn't mean it can't be easy and easygoing, like Gary was talking about. And here's some examples. Apple. If you don't have Apple stock, you probably should. It keeps going up, even when it goes down, it goes back up. I'll we'll tell you a quick little story about Apple. Following the 1985 departure of Steve Jobs, till he was rehired 12 years later, the company operated at a loss and crept towards bankruptcy. This is one of the biggest corporations in the world. It is now worth over one trillion dollars. What if in those 12 years they went, oh, what the heck? Eh, it was a great idea. We did a few cool things and a little bubble um, iMac. That was kind of fun. <laughs> you know, it's just too hard. FedEx. FedEx began in 1971. I didn't know that. Now, interesting time to begin a company that uh, has trucks and stuff because, you know, that's when the rising gas prices started occurring. And because of that, and because of some logistic nightmares, because um, they didn't quite get it at first how to do the logistics, which is really what they're all about, they started losing 
a million dollars a month. Funds got as low as $5,000. Imagine. Recent earnings, $4.5 billion. One more. Starbucks. Everywhere, right? Too many places, maybe. First opened again in 1971 in Seattle. Spread out in Seattle. Took them about 16 years before they started spreading outside of Seattle. Now they're worth $30 billion. What if they just decided, well, you know, everything's cool. We'll just stay here in Seattle. People like us. Nobody's mad at us. Back to the song. The struggles I'm facing, the chances I'm taking, sometimes might knock me down. But, I, but no, I'm not breaking. I may not know it, but these are the moments that I'm going to remember most. It's always going to be mountains. You know, it's, it's our perception and our perspective of what those mountains mean. Is it something, is it that wall you're going to hit? Remember the story? I don't know if I told that story here. I won't get into it much, but it's a story about a caterpillar, and the caterpillar hits this wall, and it tries to climb up the wall, and it doesn't have the ability to climb up the wall, and it tries to go this way, and it doesn't see an end, and it goes this way, and doesn't see an end, so it sits and waits patiently and becomes what? A butterfly and just flies over the sucker. <laughs> We're going to hit some mountains. People might get in our way. Well, people, we will allow people to get in our way. We will allow situations to get in our way. We may buy into the idea that I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to run a company. There's a person sitting in this audience right now, didn't know how to run a company that's been successful now for 15 plus years, yes? <laughs> Could have stopped and went, I don't know how to run a company. Gosh, I gotta rent a space, I gotta, do, I gotta get people to show up, I gotta get clients and customers and, ugh, they could have stopped right there, that's too much. But no. You step into the consciousness of this is what I'm going to do, this is the success I'm going to have, and if things get in my way, I'm going to say, you know what, you don't belong here, thanks for dropping by, and move forward and take new action, or find somebody who will teach me how to take the action that I need to take, or take a class, or whatever. Pierre Delhard de Chardin said, someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then for a second time in the history of the world, man will have discovered fire. It's all about love and the passion of this idea we're talking about. So what happens when, for some reason, who cares, we've allowed things to get in our way of this idea that we're passionate about? Well, we can come back from that. And let me give you a few ideas. I got five. Pay attention to the successes. I don't care how small they are. Joe Schmo answered the phone. Yay. That was a success for the day. Somebody I've been trying to get a hold of for a week, we finally spoke yesterday. We played phone tag. I could have gone, oh, forget it, I'll go find somebody else to do this, this thing that, uh, that I wanted done. And I, but no, I just waited. I knew it would show up, and it showed up. Number two, reflect on purpose. Remind yourself why. I don't do this to, to just take um, five, eight minutes out of, um, our, out of our service. I do this because this is an important reminder. I don't make these cards to be clever and to give you a gift. Well, I do want to give you a gift every week. Um, I do this because I want you to take this and be this all week so that by the end of the week, you are this. Or, and or, if you read the Science of Mind split, how they split the uh, book into 365 days. If you read that every morning, too. Read that in the morning and this at night. That's a way to reflect on your purpose and remind yourself of what's going on in life. In your life. And, and who you are and where you come from. Not the town. Number three, say goodbye to what hasn't worked. 
that is not just stuff. That is not just, um, you know, uh, whatever. This music stand doesn't work, so I'm going to go get something else that will work. I'm going to figure out a way so that everything just kind of floats. Or, you know, this person that I hired to do this, uh, well, that happened uh, to us in the website. I hired somebody to, um, to do the website, and I didn't like where they were going, and so I said thank you, bye. Uh, happened with the logo, too. This logo, well, that's not the full logo, but um, the logo you see on the back of the card. Um, I hired somebody to work on that, and they weren't quite getting what I was explaining. And I went back to make sure I was communicating correctly, and I was, and it was just not something in their wheel box as far as that kind of um, idea. And so I politely said thank you and moved on to somebody who came up with this beautiful logo that we have. So say goodbye to what hasn't worked. Number four, take time to rest, rejuvenate, and schedule joy. Between writing the talk, doing the bookkeeping, putting, sending out the e-blast, you know, that takes um, many hours out of the week. And then, you know, I also have a job and I have a relationship and I have, you know, a house that I have to share and take care of, etc. cetera. Um, I got to remind myself to sit the heck down and relax. And go for a walk. Take an exercise class. Do something, quote unquote, for myself. Not that doing this work isn't for myself as well. But there is a re re rest and relaxation that we must do that has nothing to do with our works, whatever that those are. When we do that, when we have the energy, we have the we refresh ourselves to move forward, and that that includes. That includes those in retirement, too. You know, people in retirement, they, they, they just replace this 9 to 5 thing with something else. Um, and something else may, be, may start to get tiring, but they think, no, i got to finish this, i got to do this, i got this project. Well, take a break from the project of redoing this room. Take a break and then come back and refresh yourself. Number five, reimagine, re-wonder, and get curious again. Sometimes we work on these ideas and whatever's going on, um, like the song was talking about, um, that gets in a way or we allow to get in our way, you know, uh, we start losing the, the passion because we forget the original idea, we forget the original purpose, and we need to sit ourselves down and reimagine it, reconnect with it, and get curious about it again. Get curious about it again. Maybe it's time to find new ally, allies. Maybe it's time for a new logo. Maybe it's time to um, go, go, go to a different place where your office is. Maybe it's time to move the furniture around in, in your, your home, whatever. Meister Eckhart said there is a light in the soul that is uncreated and uncreatable. That's that divine spark in us. That is the divine, the divinity that we reveal, that we talk about. It is, uh, it is unconditional, it is universal, it is birthless, it is deathless, it is infinite. It's an energy, it's an essence that is with us at all times, and we can always tap into it, because it's always there. St. Catherine of, of Genoa said, my me is God, nor do I know my selfhood except in God. Do you know your selfhood in God? Do you know that selfhood that you are is that divine spark that reveals itself when you open yourself up to that? That is the greatest idea to keep our passion and our consciousness and our intention on. That selfhood, that Godhood that we are. Going to Ernest Holmes from Creative Mind and Success, he wrote, all the power and intelligence of the universe is already within waiting to be utilized. The divine spark must be fanned into a blaze of the living fire of your own divinity. So it's time. It's time to re-fan re those flames in our consciousness till our consciousness ca catches up with the idea. Sometimes that happens.
The consciousness needs to catch up or re-catch up, like in a marathon, with our idea that we, that we are really are passionate about. Last bit of the song. But I gotta keep trying, gotta keep my head held high, just gotta keep going and I gotta be strong. Just keep pushing on, keep on moving, keep climbing, keep the faith, baby. It's all about the climb. So what are you climbing? Are you climbing with the assurance and the knowledge of what you have learned in this philosophy, what I talk about every week, what, what is on those affirmation cards, what, what Reverend Gary or Reverend Barbara or, or any of our guests talk about in the sacred reading, are you assured of that? That's why you come here. That's what we're talking about, is this and this and this. These work because they are, and we can be assured of it. And when things aren't happening as groovy as we thought, we can go back to this and not start over, refresh, reboot. I want to end this with a sort of a poem. Uh, Percy Shelley, who was Mary Shelley's husband, Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. Uh, he wrote a play called Prometheus Unbound, which kind of inspired his wife to write Frankenstein. And at the end of the play, a character is speaking to Prometheus. And the character says, to suffer woes which hope thinks infinite, to forgive wrongs darker than death or night, to defy power which seems omnipotent, to love and bear, to hope till hope creates from its own wreck the thing it contemplates. Neither to change nor falter nor repent, this, like thy glory, Titan, is to be good, great and joyous, beautiful and free. This is alone life, joy, empire, and victory. So here's to your victory. Here's to your success, here's to your passion, your joy, your idea, your consciousness, the fire that is in you because you are revealing the divinity, the fire that is within you because you are vibrating at the speed of this divinity, the fire that is within you. You are ablaze with the glory of the divine. Use it and use it right now. Thank you so much. Namaste. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo!